stood down as Chelsea CEO in October, and um, you are now a non-executive director of mm -hmm. Chelsea Football Club. Um, could you explain to us your role in, in Chelsea now? Yeah, I'm, 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 I mean, basically, I'm, I've stepped back from the day-to-day -day mm -hmm. responsibility. Uh, I'm still on the board, uh, so I'll be supporting the sort of management team and and uh, continuing to have a. Uh, uh, an interest and in, in a role and as part of that role I'll continue my uh, positions on the UEFA Strategy Council and the Football Club okay. uh, and the FIFA um, Football uh, Council and uh, as a board member of the European Club uh, which was set uh, sort of following G14 so you know, I'll still be very much involved in, at the European and world level. So you, in that respect, you do represent Chelsea yes. on those various uh, yes. councils and bonds? Yes. Okay. And um, I understand that you are also involved with um, CAA? Yes. Um, in, w in what capacity? Well, um, you know, CAA have got a tremendous business in the US. And, um, I'm looking to build a sports and media. Um, in the States? Uh, no, no, network internationally. So okay. everywhere outside right. of the US. Right. So hopefully that will bring me to this region even more. Okay. Um, various sports or, or specifically football? Uh, all sports, but we're going to be concentrating very much on football as, as really the, the global sport. Mm -hmm. um, when you said bring you to this region more often, um, what would, would it involve uh, talent spotting? Uh, well, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I've been I've been there two or three weeks, so I'm still understanding the business. Okay. So rather than talking about you know what we're going to do, really, I'm looking at. Uh, what, are, what the current activities of the business are, mm -hmm. and then we'll be developing plans to develop the business internationally. Okay, great. Um, you know, um, the EPL clubs recently have been um, um, uh, have actually interested certain parties in Asia. Um, recently, Taksin Sinawatra previously owned Man City, and um, Kasen Yong from Hong Kong mm -hmm. bought over Birmingham City. And then there's actually talk of a Malaysian buying Cardiff City. Mm -hmm. um, are they really viable takeover options, EPL clubs, in, in this current economic climate? Well, I think what we've seen is we've seen, uh, and, and I, I was at the AFC for the last two days and, and talking to their, um, their Premier clubs, their Champions League clubs, and, and their, their leagues. Um, you know, and the vision for football in this region, I think, is. is is, is very visionary, um, and I think the start of the Champions League is a is another dimension of football in this region going to the next level. So I think some real positives, uh, and, and we talk very much about um, the English League and English Premier League clubs. You know what were the commercial drivers, and mm -hmm. um, and and what's happened is I think we've now got to a stage whereby not only we've been attracting um, media. You know, we've grown our international coverage from about 27 countries to over 200. Mm -hmm. We've attracted most of the major consumer brands to be attached to Premier League football in one guise or other, either at club level or league level. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're now starting to be looked at as a investment opportunities, um, and whether that's from Middle East or from Asian uh, people then I think that's that natural natural next step mm -hmm. in the evolution of the Premier League becoming you know seen as successful um, from a sport and from a business point of view mm -hmm. um, I, I mean clearly you know we're, we're part of a 2018 bid for World Cup mm -hmm. so you know there's a lot of activity we've got the Olympics in 2012 mm -hmm. so uh, around sport and, and, and England, there's there's an awful lot of focus at the moment. So I, I think it's natural that we'll start to see more foreign investors, or certainly more people looking to invest. Mm -hmm. Okay, but does that reduce the uh, <coughs> so-called Englishness of, of the EPL clubs? No, I don't think it does. Uh, I, I mean, uh, yeah, at the end of the day, what we're looking for are good owners. Um, you know, I, I think part of the appeal of the Premier League is the international nature. You know, we've seen Chelsea was was, was, was invested heavily in not just stadium and, and players and training facilities, but we've got fourteen different nationalities who play for us. The core of our team is still very English and that's what that's the that's the plan mm -hmm. uh, and a concerted effort. But you know, we've seen the impact of those different nationalities mm -hmm. on the club uh, in terms of you know other business opportunities it brings as well mm -hmm. as awareness of 
um, you know, uh, the club to all those countries. So, uh, I, I, and yet I don't think that detracts at all uh, to our fans or to our players. Mm-hmm. Uh, they know exactly that they're playing for an English yeah. club in the English Premier League, best right. in London. So I don't think it detracts at all. I think it's really about the quality of the ownership mm-hmm. and, and the objectives of that ownership to, mm-hmm. to ensure that the club is run properly and funded correctly. Okay. Um, you mentioned um, Asi- the Asian version of the Champions League, mm. you know, uh, which is up and running. But um, in a recent interview, and I quote what you said, you said, quality is the name of the game. Yep. And it's not down to marketing or smart business techniques. And you, 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 you mentioned this in the Asian context. Mm. Um, you well, I, you know, I, I, I don't think I don't think Asia is any different than anywhere else. You know, the, the product is football, and that's on the pitch, okay. and it's 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 how that is played, it's how that is structured, it is that how that competition is run, mm-hmm. and ultimately the success of an individual club that will then drive mm-hmm. all the other business opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, it's not business first football next, it's football first, business next. Yeah. Now, yeah. it's absolutely integrally linked, mm-hmm. um, but that's the, that's the reality, you know, fans want to watch football. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, sponsors want to be involved with football for the right reasons because there's lots of fans watching lots of media coverage. So, you know, it's, it's, you can't divorce one from the other, sure. but it starts with football. And, you know, and it starts then with the competitions and, and and, and, and where the business acumen comes in is the right structure of the leagues, the right structure of football clubs, the right people running the clubs, mm-hmm. and, and, and people doing the right jobs. So, you know, the, the quality I refer to is what the quality of player, quality of competition, and quality of management involved in okay. organising. Okay.